you. Hello guys, I'm Vlad Pahonsu and welcome to my podcast. We're going to talk about photography. We're going to talk about how to become a pro wedding photographer. During this period is a little bit hard to go to a workshop or to a conference to um, learn new things, getting out from your house. And that's why I thought it's a great idea to um, launch a podcast about photography. I'm going to talk about everything that involves photography. Everything starting from how to find your way, how to find your style and ending with how to get your clients, how to deliver everything between gear, marketing, social media, portfolio, editing, everything is going to be covered in my podcast. First of all, before we start, be sure you subscribe here already to my channel i'm a wedding photographer for 10 years now god how how fast time passes and i think i had a lot to learn from many people and from going to workshops and being my own teacher and having other teachers around me and discovering by myself because if i discover something by myself it's very likely to understand better what's happening if i'm going to uh, find out and i'm going to google it yeah uh, what was the problem uh, why i uh, overexposed something or why i am underexposing uh, a subject why it's not as i want it to be but um, i think from 2015 um, so everything changed in my life because I participated at my first workshop, my first photography workshop, and it was mind blowing because until then I thought that I can, I don't know, I can learn without anybody's help, but I was very, very wrong. And I found out that some extraordinary shots can be done very easily. So it took uh, a step forward in my in, in my whole life in my whole business you know thinking about th this kind of experience thinking about how you're going to evolve develop yeah it's is very awesome thinking about um you're going to be a pro photographer i'm not talking only uh, of weddings I'm talking about everything because many ideas we're going to talk about here are going to apply in other domains um, uh, related to photography, right? I mean, if you want to develop a social media um, marketing strategy, yeah, you're going to learn something that you can apply in other domains related to social media. We're going to learn about accountants about contracts <laughs> being a photographer is like being everything is like being an accountant is like being a lawyer <laughs> um, a media specialist a social media specialist a marketing specialist interior designer we're gonna see why I'm telling this it was an extraordinary experience for me and I'm repeating extraordinary because this is the perfect word that describes what I've experienced during the last 10 years. So guys, why do you want to become a photographer? Why do you want to become a pro wedding photographer? This is the main question you have to ask yourselves when you're starting this trip. Ask yourself why? Every time, ask yourselves why a great way to, to find yourself and to find resources to, to continue your journey, your extraordinary journey in this world of photography. I was fascinated 
about uh, this uh, this world i didn't start from passion i don't want to lie i started for for money uh, and in, in short time i found out that it wasn't all about money it was about connections about relationships about uh, seeing one client or another and about a whole community and all these I don't know, extraordinary events because I'm I'm coming back to this word. Yeah, it defines very, very well what I'm thinking about photography. It's extraordinary. So, first of all, you have to think why you want to become a wedding photographer. Is it passion? Is it money? Is it a new way to see the world? Because indeed, it's a new way to see the world. You're never going back to how you saw the world before knowing photography, before experiencing new things. You're going to see everything, every moment in your life as a photographer. This is a very interesting way because every time I go, uh, I don't know, to the seaside or in another country, I'm, I'm seeing different things, different than my wife, different from my friends. Uh, I see light different. I see many, 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 many things related to my whole world different. And it's not a bad way. It's not a good way or a bad way. It's an interesting way to see things because knowing so many um, techniques and learning about light and learning about posing and learning about each technique in photography, I found out that I can combine them and my head is running differently from now on, right? But my brain is set up on new things, is um, trained to see new things, is trained to see new poses, new light scenarios, right? And only for this you should try to be a photographer. Being a photographer is not all about um, having an iPhone or a Samsung or any other mobile device and taking some shots or some uh, selfies. Now, you can do selfies in another way. You can think selfies if you want to. If, if you want to do something different, you can do something different with your own selfies. I know you can uh, take 1000 selfies a day <laughs> and choose just one by the way, is a bad, bad percentage <laughs> of choosing which is one from 1,000. You should be more and more careful about that. We, we're going to talk in another uh, podcast about, uh, about this and about choosing and how much do I shoot at a wedding or at an at event. And you can do different things every time. So you're not a photographer just because you have um, a, a cell phone, a, a smartphone. You're not a photographer only if you have, um, because you have a camera. This is not enough. It's not enough to have a D DSLR or a mirrorless. You know that I spent almost two months just me with my camera tried to learn as much as i could about my camera how does it work how does it um, think because camera has its own way of thinking how to to combine light with the uh, subject and how do i expose this and this is what camera thinks yeah it's an algorithm but it thinks right so you, ha you have to do more than that to be a photographer. You have to do more, more, more than that. It, I don't want to, to scare you because I'm sure that you know already that you have to do many things in life to reach your goal. You have to work a lot to reach your goal. You know, I think photography is a story. I think you have to know how to tell a story. Yeah, how to be a storyteller, in fact. And probably this is like a story. Everything that happens here 
is like a story, is like a book, is like a, a chapter from a book, from an open book. First of all, after you found out why do you want to become a photographer, is to understand what you need to do to become a pro wedding photographer or just a wedding photographer or just a pro photographer because yeah, there are many things that you have to do in order to become what you want to do to become. So I'm talking here about your mental state, your um, mindset is very, very important to a photographer to have a, a great mindset and to be focused on the achievements, to be focused on his, its goals. And probably starting uh, this road trip, beginning this road trip, you have to choose your goals. You have to choose it carefully because they will guide you through this whole story story to be a photographer in the same time photography changed me because i was just a um, unsocial person before starting to to go to events and to take photos at weddings and to have uh, clients to talk with them to socialize and i was just very shy this is the word this is the perfect word i was just very very shy and we, we're not going to talk about what problems i had in my childhood because we all do we all do and we all have all kind of problems uh, psychological I, I'm, I'm talking about here everything that has a certain action on your behavior during your life this is a fact the fact is that i was very shy and after four years of doing this over and over again being a photographer i changed i managed to change and i managed to talk with uh, other people unknown people without any problem i was having problems talking to a camera in front of a camera or to a camera <laughs> because both ways are correct i tried and i succeed to get over this problem i had problems over exposing pictures or underexposing them i tried and i succeed in uh, get getting over this problem every time i had a problem i tried to resolve it and i managed to resolve it this is very important it's important to to see what you're doing wrong and in the beginning you're going to do a lot of things wrong and it's not a, a bad thing it's, it's a normal thing to do this this is how I've learned a lot of things and this is how I encourage you to do it um, just just do a lot of wrong things in photography buy a camera and make all sorts of experiments this is photography yeah yeah i think that this is it experiment experiment and find out what are the good and the bad things that result that results from that experiment and try to repair it this is one of the best ways to learn yeah it's not the fastest this is for sure not the fastest way the fastest way is to learn from podcasts, workshops, conferences are for socializing, yeah, not for learning so much as a uh, workshop is. Why do you want to become a photographer? I keep returning to this question because it's very, very important. Try to answer this and tell me why do you want to become a photographer? We should start with um, knowing what photography has to offer you because it's going to offer you a lot i wanted to be a photographer because i wanted to make some money not to be rich <laughs> i have to be honest and it turned out 
that now I'm a photographer because I'm very passionate about it. And every time I think about photography, I think like, wow, this is a great thing. This is the greatest thing that ever happened to my life. We're not talking about people here um, as my wife. No, we're talking about things. Uh, I started as a, a journalist. I was crazy in love with football. And I wanted to be a journalist, uh, a football journalist, uh, if you want to say it like this. And I did it. I went to university in Bucharest. And after just one year, I managed to get a job at the best uh, sport newspaper in in Romania and I did that job for five years I did radio um, TV written press online press yeah print press online press I think I follow my dream this was extraordinarily important for me to follow my dreams not only my dream in 2010, photography was just a business. It was not the perfect thing for me. We started out with a company uh, that provided services to nightclubs, nightclubs like discos and, uh, and music. And we went to every club that contracted us and do pictures during the night. and promoted the pictures on my website, on our website. I had a friend, uh, my associate, and it, it wasn't our dream. You know, it, it was just a business. But going to clubs and taking uh, photos, I find out that I can um, relate to many, many uh, people. I found out that I can relate to a lot of people. I can talk to a lot of people. And it was like, wow, I can do that. I can do that and I can do it in, in a very easy way. So I, I try to think about this. I try to think that this is going to be a great job in the future. I was still a journalist. I was going to... All, all kind of events in 2014 I had my first wedding because I started with little things small things small events I started with nightclubs as I told you and after that meeting I don't know 3,000 4,000 5,000 people personally talking to them I was in club three nights a week I found out that I can get jobs better paid very easily. And that's how I managed to, to have over 160 parties like this paid. I started with 20 euro and I was keep growing the price. Yeah, because the inquiries kept coming. So, from 20 euros to 600 euros, I think it was the, the biggest growth because before I, I stopped doing this kind of parties. This kind of growth was incredible for me. And doing so many parties, I went to my first christenings yeah, um, one baptism, really. And after that, I went to my first wedding. Before going to that wedding, I told myself that I'm not going to do weddings. I'm not going to do weddings. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a wedding photographer. I was very wrong. I was very, very, very wrong. Indeed, after 20 hours spent on that wedding, I was like, oh my God, I'm not going to sign another wedding on 
a hundred dollars or a hundred euros it was crushing for me i wasn't prepared for so many hours to stay at a wedding or at an event and i said okay it wasn't so bad the the whole experience wasn't so bad there were extraordinary people and very very nice and now when i'm meeting them uh on the street i'm like hello how are you doing oh my god blood how are you doing or how are you and on and on and it wasn't a bad experience probably if you go to um event that you don't want to go you will set up your mind to be like oh i'm not going to to come here again i'm not going to this to do this again that's why your mind should be focused and you have to be optimistic about everything that's going to happen you have to take all the energy and use it to do good things to do uh, extraordinary photos you have to be very positive about everything about every event that you're going to even though you, you took it because you needed some money this doesn't change your your mind it has to be positive you have to stay positive every time no matter what happens no matter what um, problems you'll you, you'll face during that day during that event you have to stay positive this is a whole new chapter um, from our story but this is all related to why do you want to become a photographer or what do you have to do to start this job to start this passion so it wasn't a passion for me it was just a job in the beginning but now is almost everything that i got we're not talking about my family we're talking about everything besides my family after that wedding i was so impressed because the people were very nice and it was a whole new world for me except the the, the party i didn't knew traditions because i wasn't invited to any wedding until then and even now <laughs> I'm not invited to weddings because people know that I'm not free and chances that I'm going to be free next year are very low and they can't plan a wedding with two or three years uh, in advance just to be there, just me to be there. I have to admit that 80% of the weddings I've been without being um, an, an, uh, an invited person I was a uh, godfather. So this is this is very cool. Probably this is the main problem or the main situation for pro photographers because when they're going to a wedding as an invited person, they are godfathers or they are uh, brothers of the bride or the groom or sisters of the bride or the groom, right? So it's very cool from this point of view. And I wasn't, uh, yeah, I wasn't invited to any other weddings before my first wedding as a photographer, and I didn't knew so many things about a wedding. Even now, I'm, uh, I'm still learning because there are um, different parts in every country where people uh, do different things at a wedding, different traditions, and this is what you have to learn every time before going to a wedding you have no traditions yeah we're gonna talk again in another chapter and i was fascinated after that wedding but in my mind was i'm not going to go again uh at a wedding on 100 dollars. the financial subject is very 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 um sensitive in um, photography everyone asks everyone about what's your price or what's your uh, charge, what are the packages, and on and on. But every photographer has its own way of um, packing all the financial stuff. You have to know that from the beginning. Even if I take 2,000 euros per wedding and 
other guy takes uh, 1,000 or 500 euros, it really matters what I'm charging for. I'm charging for a whole experience. I'm um, this kind of photographer that wants to give you a whole experience when you go to, to a wedding. When you go to a wedding with me or when I'm at a wedding, when I'm at your wedding, I give you the whole experience. This is my experience. This is my way to sign a contract. This is my way to be, in fact, because this is how I am. I tried to be as natural as I could because I don't want to be fake. I hate to be fake. I don't want to be fake to anyone. And that's why when I meet a new client, I'm like this. I'm positive because during the wedding day, I also got to be positive no matter what. Yeah, you got to tell me that there are some uh, certain problems that you can get passed by. Ah, you have to try. You have to try because that's their uh, only event that matters for them and uh, is once in a lifetime. And you are their photographer. You are the only person that spends over 16 or 10 hours with them almost non-stop. This is different from all other people at a wedding. Yeah, you are different. You and probably the videographer are only the only two people, the only two guys or, or, um, or girls that spend that amount of time with the bride or with the groom. I don't know if you thought about this, but being a wedding photographer has to be everything for you. You have to understand that you are one of the most important pieces from a wedding. You are the queen or the king. It depends on how much importance gives you uh, the bride or, or the groom. Yeah? And that's why you have to ask yourself before all things will happen, why do you want to become a wedding photographer? Because if you're going to be in this business only for money, you're not going to be a positive or a pleasant uh, presence at their wedding, at your client's wedding. And it's going to be a big problem. It's going to be a big problem during the wedding and after the wedding. During the wedding, when you're not um, getting a we well with uh, the couple, and after the wedding, when you're not providing the services that they paid for it. You have the power to change your wedding in a good way or in a bad way. And I'm not kidding. If a couple signs you to be their wedding photographer, and if it's a problem at their wedding, you, with your whole experience, because every time you come with an experience at a wedding, you come and you give your service, you, you put your whole services on a table for your clients. And when that problem comes during a wedding, you can solve it. There are problems that you can't. That's, that's true. But being positive, and knowing some, knowing some psychological things, you can make the bride or even the bridezilla. I'm, I'm going to explain what's the bridezilla in the future podcasts. In the future podcast, you can change her uh, bad mood into a, a good mood or into a normal mood. But from from here, from from way below. You can um, transform a bride to a normal bride or to a, a positive bride. And that's extraordinary. That's your power. Of course, you can destroy a wedding. You can transform an extraordinary wedding. You can transform a beautiful wedding into a, a chaos, a totally chaos one. Why I'm telling you this and how you can do that by not having a backup 
and, and breaking your camera by um, acting very bad during the wedding day, being a negative person and a bad person and a no person. Yeah. The bride during the, the wedding day is very fragile. Very fragile. What I mean with this is that her um, mind, her uh, psychological state is very fragile. You have to be very aware of this. You have to wear gloves when you talk with her. Every time you take an action during the day, you have to be very careful because it's a lot of pressure during a wedding. That's for sure. No matter what, no matter how is the couple, it's a lot of pressure. Everything has to be perfect. I found out this after a few years and after going and going and going and going to a lot of weddings and see how people act and react. So to summarize, you can be whatever you want to be during that day. You can be the bride's brother that helps her with, I don't know, uh, getting ready or um, planning the wedding. You can be the planner to plan the wedding, to help her plan the wedding. You can be the florist. If you have um, enough knowledge, you can advise her what flowers she should buy or what colors she can um, use to compose uh, a beautiful bouquet, right? You can be everything you want to be during a wedding day. Be careful with this. Although you, you have this power, uh, you have to be very careful with this because some uh, people from uh, different weddings can um, see you as a different thing, not as a photographer. They can see you as a different um, provider. If you do, um, if you start singing during a wedding and you sing one, two, three, four, five songs, hey, you sing, probably you sing well, okay, you sing good. But doing this repeatedly, probably those guys will see you as more as a, a singer than a photographer. And this will be bad for your business in the future when you want to sign you uh, as a photographer. Another chapter of our beautiful story. <laughs> we have so much to talk about. I told you how I've become a photographer, why I've become a photographer, and what do I think about becoming a photographer and how you should start this action, how you should start this story, with what thoughts you should start this. Why should you be a photographer? That's very easy and very complicated to ask and to respond also. I can tell you this, that after 10 years in this domain, I think I'm the happiest man on earth because I'm doing this. Because you have the power to transform reality into digital reality. You have, you have the power to be a storyteller, to be a wedding storyteller in digital way or in a printed way with your own ideas. You can be as innovative as you want to be. You can come with new ideas. You can use your own style and you can do special things for your couple, for your clients. Special things that will last for a life. This is incredible big. Special things that will last for life in your clients' minds and in your clients' albums. You'll be the most important person that attended that wedding, their wedding. And the person who succeeded to be the perfect storyteller for their wedding. And I can't tell you how important is this for your clients, for the bride, for the groom, for both mothers, godmothers. They will love you if you're 
be a pro wedding photographer because in fact what's a pro wedding photographer it's a photographer that tells a story in a perfect way at a perfect time for the perfect people thank you all for watching this podcast i can't even wait for the next chapter from our story how to become a pro wedding photographer subscribe and see you next time bye